Meteor is the in place to be. Keep watching the skies. I'm sorry, but we're book solid. The UFO convention, yes. So there's not a room in the motel, and all the recreational vehicle spots are all tied up. If you insist on coming, all I can suggest you do is bring along a sleeping bag and sleep under the stars or in your automobile. Why, yes, we do have a luncheonette. No, we do not serve vegetarian pizza. Our specialty is Mars burgers. I'm going to disconnect that phone. All it does is ring. You also have a computer, Miss Albright. At least an answering. Oh. At least an answering or a fax machine. This far from town, I'm lucky to have a telephone that functions. Hasn't anyone canceled the room? Rosie and me don't mind sharing. We'll share with our friend Carol, too. She won't mind sleeping on the floor. All I can think about is a hot shower. Young ladies, I've told you a hundred times. If I had a room in motel, I'd give it to you. I'll put your names on the top of the waiting list for now. How long is the waiting list? Very long, I'm afraid. We don't like to sleep outside. Uh, we're not? Coyotes and wolves and scorpions and snakes? If worse comes to worse, you can sleep here, in the lobby. The, the lobby? You won't be alone. That sounds worse than coyotes and wolves and scorpions and snakes. It's the best I can do for now. <coughs> Call back next week. I didn't realize things were that hectic. Imagine, turning away business? It's either that or I lose my sanity. I hear ringing telephones in my sleep. I don't care how good the tips are. I quit. You don't need that, Hazel. I don't, huh? Watch. What's the trouble now? There's only two people to work the dining room and the counter. That's one waitress, me. That's one chef, your brother, Doug here. We're working as fast as we can. Honest, Peggy. I believe you. You've got to hire more help. Only we could. You know it's hard to get anyone to work here this far out from town. Well, I'm only human. I can only do so much. Hey, how about some service? Waitress, waitress. Where's my Mars burger? Just a moment, please. We'll get to each and every one of you. I should hope so. We're hungry. We're starving. Would you girls like a job for a few days? Certainly not. We didn't come to meet our ancestors, Mars burgers. We came here to listen to all the people who've been abducted by aliens, sucked up into the guts of the prowling starships, and lived to tell about it. I think most of those people are in the dining room. Bad news, Miss Albright. Now what? Might as well let me hear it. The dryer broke down again, which means I'll have to dry the towels and face cloths in the sun. I just hope we don't get any rain. What next? Food! Food! We want food! Service! Service! There they go again! Mars Burger! Mars Burger! They're so rude! Look up on the upside, which is... The nearest place they can get anything to eat is over 20 miles away. And it doesn't serve Mars Burgers. Please be patient, Hazel. It's only for a week. Yeah, but what a week! Will I survive it? Please, Hazel. Please. Okay. Such a softy. Whew, that problem solved. I never could resist the man who grovels. Hey, how about some service? Waitress, waitress. How long are we supposed to wait? Help is on the way. If it rains, we got big trouble. Nobody likes a soggy towel. Bernice, see what you can do in the kitchen. Give Hazel a hand. I'll be glad when this week is over. So will I. It's only temporary. That's what the dentist said about my tooth. Any luck? No room yet, but we're at the top of the waiting list. There must be a hundred red vehicles out there. I had no idea this many people would be this interested in a UFO convention. I didn't realize they don't want to stay here. The Meteorite Inn. Why wouldn't they? The Meteorite Inn is the only motel and restaurant close to Area 502. The military installation the government says doesn't exist. Doesn't <laughs> exist? <laughs> there are many weird sightings around here. Have you experienced any sightings, Miss Albright? Uh, well, um, you know, um, you girls mentioned a hot shower? Hot, hot shower? With real hot water. Real hot water. It sounds like heaven. I'm holding one room until this evening. Room 202. Please don't leave it a mess. 
Thanks a million, Miss Albright. Remember, leave the room as clean as you find it. You betcha. You're an angel. Or an alien. An <laughs> alien? You never know. Know something? She's right. Meet her right in. The in place to be. Keep watching the skies. Who? Sheriff Chickamauga? No, I'm sorry. I haven't seen him at all this week. Of course, I'll let him know he's call his office. No trouble at all. Good morning, Peggy. Good morning, Mary Mitweed. Morning, Peggy. Mrs. Willis? I'm delighted to be here. It's a long way to drive to lunch, but I can promise her Miss Willis and Mars Burger sent. Last Halloween, I even dined to try one. Does it come with chips or fries? Try some chips, fries, or slaw. I wonder how to shoot the hot fries or the slaw. You can never make up your mind about anything, Cynthia. That's not true. I think I'll have the slaw. Maybe I'll have the chips. Are the chips fresh? As fresh as the bag they come in. I'm most anxious to meet the woman who's organized this UFO convention. In her letter, she asked if I would give a little welcoming speech to all the weirdos. Careful what you say, Mary Louise. You might be overheard. I don't think the conventioneers like to hear you call them weirdos. No, they wouldn't. What else would you call people who claim they've been abducted by aliens? People who see spaceships in the night sky and strange lights. Perhaps another choice word might have been better. How about Netburgers? <laughs> Remember, Mayor Midweed, these people help our local economy. They spend a great deal of money. You're quite correct, Peggy. If they wish to leave in strange things, that's entirely up to them. I'll be over best day here. <laughs> the theater size in Muggleworth now. Who? The woman who's conducting the convention. Muggleworth. Yes, of course. How do you do, Miss Muggleworth? I'm Mayor Mitweed. A pleasure to meet you. Things are going well with the convention, I trust. Splendid, I'm happy to report. Is it that nice? This is my assistant, Susanna Broom. A pleasure, Mayor. Susanna, put the literature on the table. Spread the pamphlets out. May I have a pamphlet? Sure thing. Alien autopsies and how to perform them. It's a popular topic. Not exactly light reading, but I imagine it's most educational. They are coming. You know, more and more of them. We must be prepared. Who, who's coming? Them. Them? them? She means creatures. Creatures? You know, alien creatures. Oh. oh. They're probably watching us this very moment. Do, do you really think so? I'm sure of it. <laughs> uh, how about some lunch? You and your assistant will join me, won't you? I don't mind. Well, there is so much to do. Still, one must not ignore nourishment. We must give up strength for the coming battle. Battle? Miss Mugglewort is convinced the aliens are hostile. You mean they won't be friendly? That's what hostile usually means. Let's discuss it over lunch. After you, Miss Mugglewort, Miss Brew. What did I tell you? Weirdo. On patrol for UFOs. Watch it. Miss Albright, do you have any lubricant oil? Just a little oil would help the right wheel squeak. It's so annoying! Squeak, squeak, squeak! Commander Coburn calling headquarters. Commander Coburn calling headquarters. Come in, he headquarters. Why, hello, Commander Coburn. I didn't see you there on the floor. You're going to get awfully dirty. Wouldn't you be more comfortable somewhere else? How did you know it was me? Don't be silly. I met you yesterday. We all did. When you were prowling through the wrecked vehicles looking for aliens. That's supposed to be classified information. Have you found any aliens yet? I'm not permitted to discuss it. Top secret. Hush hush. My lips are sealed. In that case, you need something to brighten up your day. 
How about a kid? This one says, I have been to the 1992 UFO convention. Kid stuff. Okay, how about a button? This one says, I have been to Mars and survived. Taurus trash. My, my, you are hard to please. I've got a lot on my mind. Come to the territory. It's a flaw. It's a gimmick. What did you expect? Chop sirloin? Hey, get the perfect. Those Mars burgers were nothing but plain old hamburgers, and I should know. I've eaten enough of them. The menu said it was irrigated. Not irrigated, irradiated. Big deal. Hi, boys. Hi, Hi Geraldine. Geraldine. How's business? I can't complain. I sold all the balloons in Little Stuff's basement. All I have left are pins, buttons, and badges. I bet you sell out. That's what I'm hoping to do. Dirty, rotten, stinking space invaders. I'm going to irradiate you! Oh, hi, Commander Coburn. Didn't see you behind the sofa. Cell patrol, huh? You'll find out. <laughs> this is an alert. The aliens are coming. The aliens are coming. Commander Coburn here. I've just captured three Martians attempting to pass themselves off as ordinary citizens. We are ordinary citizens. Speak for yourself. That thing isn't loaded, is it? Give me trouble and you'll find out, Martian. I'm not Martian. They all say that. We won't stay long to be murder. Just long enough for me to polish off the Dr. Pepper. You're the sheriff. Look, it's the sheriff. Hi, Sheriff. Howdy, one and all. What's this? Commander Colburn with a firing device? He's harmless. Until your feet are meat. Let me see that. What? What? This here ain't nothing but a kid's toy. How do you know what it looks like? The real thing. Shows how much you know. That weapon not only detects aliens, it's capable of destroying them. Handle with care. Well, I said this here weapon ain't nothing but a hunger jump, and I said you're mushy between the ears. You shouldn't talk to me like that, Sheriff Chickamauga. I deserve respect. I'm all that stands between the convention ears and disaster. Oh, you're the disaster. I got rights. If I find out you've been a door, folks, I'll let you explain them rights to the judge. Go on, get out of here. Take this pea shooter with ya. Remember, Martians, Commander Coburn takes no prisoners. On patrol for you, I vote. <laughs> Whenever he's around, it's like feeding time at the zoo. Deputy Murdoch? Yes, sir. Find me Doug Albright and his, and his sister. Tell them I want to speak with them pronto. Doug's in the kitchen. I'll find them. Find me that Miss Muggleworth, too. She's having lunch. Her lunch will keep. Leave it to me. Oh, and Deputy Murdoch? Yes, yeah, sir? Don't forget my Dr. Seuss. I thought you said you wanted a Dr. Pepper. Do Dr. Pepper, that's it. Can never keep them doctors straight. One Dr. Pepper coming up. Oh, and uh, plenty of us. There's one thing I can't abide. It's a warm Dr. Pepper. Fix my tonsils crotchety. Hot day. Mighty hot day. Don't you think you were a little hard on Commander Coburn, Sheriff? Ah, oh, that kook's a menace. He's harmless. Harmless, huh? Last year, he got himself a male order tank and drove it into the desert. Squashed all the cactus plants. That's a federal fence in these parts. What happened to him? The judge sent him away for 30 days observation. But he came back. He always comes back. Commander Coburn don't make my job easy. Wanna buy a pin, Sheriff? I already got a pen. Rides real good, too. I'll see how I do outside. Wish me luck! Luck. luck. I reckon you boys be out staring at the sky tonight. That's what we came for. Don't mess up any plants and stay close to the two-lane highway. 
Sure thing, Sheriff. We won't cause any trouble. Better not. This convention is a lot of hooey. You've got a bad attitude about this convention, Sheriff. I'm entitled. Better check on our bedrolls. No one would steal them. Better safe than sorry. Here's your uh, Dr. Pepper, Sheriff. Look, you don't expect me to walk over there and get it myself, do you? Fetch it here! This meteor rock, it vaccinates me. They say it fell from the sky a million years ago. Doug sometimes says it glows. I want my beverage! By the time I get it, all the ice will be melted. Ice makes me think of the Ice Age. Ice makes me think, hmm, maybe I need a new death buddy! Where's Doug Albright? He's coming. Miss Muggleworth, too. Fine, Peggy Albright. Bet you she's in the office. Wouldn't be surprised. You wish to see me, Sheriff? Yup, all of you. Take a seat. Howdy, Mayor. Didn't know you were here. Just as well. Goodness, Sheriff Chickamauga, you sound serious. Well, I'm a serious man with a serious job. It's my thing. Anything I can do for you, Sheriff? You can hear what I gotta say. What is all the mystery, Sheriff? No mystery, but as long as this convention's being held, there have to be some ground rules. Yes, yes, of course. What kind of ground rules? If folks wander away from the highway, there ain't no telling what might happen to them. Ah, uh, I see what you mean. It might be an abduction. That ain't what I meant at all. They could get themselves bit by a dangerous critter. Oh, so if they get too close to that military installation in there, they could get themselves shot. You can't mess with Uncle Sam. The no trespassing signs are posted everywhere, but you can't see them at night on account of the fact that they don't flow. And if folks get lost out there without water, they're goners for sure. Tisk tisk. No picking up rocks. Government property. No visiting the nearby lake either. It's in the restricted zone. Stay close to the motel, that's my bus. You want us to pass on this information, correct? That I do. We shall certainly alert the pensioners to your concerns, but today is Wednesday. What of it? Wednesday is the best day to see a flying saucer. The best day to see any manner of UFO phenomenon. Is that a fact? Well, I said what I come for. Better come along, Mayor Moody. Your mom's first is getting cold and greasy. Thank you, Cynthia. You're doing a brilliant job, Sheriff Chickamauga. I try. But lately, my life's been easy. With the uh, UFOs and Aliens and Command of Cobra, Strange Conventions, the Mars Burger coming. Oh, Sheriff. Yeah? You had a call. The uh, state police? They said they couldn't reach you. We must have been at the donut shop, Sheriff. Well, I can figure that out for myself. Is that hunk of rock really from a meteorite? That's what everyone from the university says. Man, did. Lows? Sometimes. Weird. I like this shot better when folks didn't say anything that ain't supposed to be there. Let's move it, Deputy Murdoch. You're the sheriff. Wednesday. Bah! Sheriff. Sheriff Chickamauga doesn't have much imagination. I do. I've seen things over the sky in Area 502. Like what? Flames. Flames? Racing across the night sky. I think it was propane. Probably a jet operating in the dark. No, because it made this funny burping sound and it was making my flesh tingle like something was pulling at it. Yup. Deputy Murdoch! Come and check, Ch Chickamauga. Sometimes I wonder if we've ever gotten in over our heads. All this UFO stuff is bonanzas. Thanks to outer space, the meteorite in has turned to gold. Do you actually think the government had an alien prisoner down at that installation? What does it matter? You're right. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. 
Is the dining room getting out yet? Not yet, I'm afraid, Miss Dudley. Come along, Doug. The customers are starting to growl again. Food service! No rest for the weird. Any messages for me? Um. I'm afraid not, Miss Dudley. It's going to be quite a night. How's some mugger would think so? I understand Wednesday had some significance. It's when UFO activity is supposed to be particularly strong in this area. My callers will love it. I see you've got your equipment all set up. I'll take the conversation, play the thing tomorrow, and take calls. Must be exciting being a radio talk show host. It is. I don't care if the dining room's full. I'm famished. Any suggestions? Anything but a Mars burger. I hear that. What a dump. The old west meets the plastic world. I kind of like it. You would. Can I help you? I should hope so. I'm Esther Hedburn, and this is a member of my staff, Rita Armstrong. Esther Hedburn? I know the name. Best tabloid east of Mississippi. Best tabloid east and west. This is Lavinia Dudley, the talk show host. Very popular. Never heard of her. Ouch. I'll hold your room for you, Miss Hartburn. Head burn. Holding the room wasn't easy. Room 202. Room? Two. room? You mean rooms, don't you? No. One room. A single. I didn't expect you until this evening. Didn't you ask for two rooms? I can't think of everything. Rita, you're hopeless. Sorry, Miss Hedburn. You should be. I'm sure you don't have a suite, so it will have to be two rooms. I'm afraid that's impossible. Impossible is not a word I'd like to hear. If worse comes to worse, I can put a cot in your room. A cot? Or one of you could sleep here. The lobby. The lobby. You've got to be kidding. I'm afraid I'm not. Rita, take the luggage outside. Go someplace else. I'm afraid there's nothing available for 20 miles. And that'll be fully booked by now. Rita, bring back the luggage. I'll go make sure your room is ready. You do that. I don't like sleeping on a cot. You won't have to sleep on a cot. You'll be sleeping here in the lobby. <laughs> I managed to think about pillows and blankets. You can pretend you're in a hurricane. Hold this. Watch what you're doing. Sorry. Are you sure our readers will enjoy reading about this convention? Seems routine to me. We've already done so many articles on aliens, Martians, and UFOs. Scientists find living creature from outer space. Space alien meets with President Bush. Bat child found in cave. Tiny aliens invade human body and rob it of vitamin B. Hmm? I'm leaving all that sappy mumbo jumbo to you. I've got bigger fish to fry. Oh? I'm going to expose the meter in as a giant hoax. Hoax? Some old geezer built the motel a few years ago. I understand he didn't see five customers in a week. When he died, he built the place to his grandson and his granddaughter. They run the place. I'm at the young woman we just met. It's the granddaughter, Peggy Albright. I'll report all these sightings as just the Albright's way of making this motel a profitable venture. Fraud with a capital F. But if you do that, they may go out of business. That's no concern of mine. Public loves an expose, and I intend to ensure the public gets one. If this phony UFO motel is destroyed in the process, so what? You are good at destroying things, Miss Hedburn. Watch what you say to me, Rita. Always be replaced. Sorry, Miss Hedburn. You get a few good stories in from these loony conventioneers, and I might consider a small raise in your salary. A small raise? How can I ever thank you? Said the room would be vacant until tonight. I didn't get my hot shower. Looks like we'll be sleeping in the lobby. 
Ah, new arrivals. I'm your convention chairperson, Hyacinth Mugglewort. I bid you welcome. I'm Esther Hedman, and this is one of my feature writers, Rita Armstrong. Splendid. The more publicity, the better. Tonight, you witness extraordinary things. If you say so. I've held your room for you, Miss Hedburn. What are you waiting for? Pick up the luggage and take it to my room. I'll give you a hand. My brother would help this week, but he's got his hands full in the kitchen. I heard you were coming. You can do so much to help. You've already alerted everyone to the danger. Who could forget that front page article, Mars is watching? Thrilling, that's what it was. It was a popular issue. How could it not be? Come outside. I want you to meet some of the others. I'd rather go to my room and freshen up. But you can freshen up anytime. Come on, I want you to meet the woman who's abducted up into an alien spaceship and remembers every detail. I'm sure she does. Did you know the aliens are fond of chewing gum? No. We it must be on guard every moment. <laughs> I saw something. I know I heard something. It was like a booster ignition and a liftoff. I know I saw something up there jumping around. Is that a spaceship or the Big Dipper? Where? There? I don't see anything. Look. What? That flame. Shooting across the sky. Like something experiencing fuel cell failure. I see it. Could it be a falling star? No way. It's either an unmarked aircraft or a genuine UFO. Oof, this is so exciting. Look at that! Wow. Looks like a baby fireworks display. Where are my binoculars? What can you see? Looks like a magnesium parachute flare. Whatever that is. I don't want to see a magnesium parachute flare, and I don't want to see a UFO! What do you want to see then? An alien! The real thing! You know, with the funny eyes and the squeaky voice. Look! More flares? No. Two circular objects circling each other. Wow. A weird game of ping pong in the sky. Guys, what we are witnessing is unique. Area 502 must exercise some powerful magnetic force. We could be witnessing some meteor activity. Meteor? You mean that funny rock back at the desk back at the motel? Exactly. We'll go near that thing, especially on Wednesdays. There's a whole world up there that I don't know much about. Planets, satellites. What is this? What is this? I talk and I talk, but nobody listens. What is that? It's Sheriff Chickamauga. <coughs> Deputy Murda? Didn't Miss Mugworth tell you kids to stay close to the motel? Why are you out here in the dark where you ain't supposed to be? Don't you know where you are? Somewhere in the desert? We're not afraid of snakes. Jared doesn't mean snakes. You're in a restricted zone. Restricted, restricted zone. zone! Which means I'll have to report this to the military. The military is touching about unreported violations. You're not going to arrest us, are you, Sheriff? When you violate the restricted zone, it ain't for me to say. The military is also fussy about the restricted zone. Give us a break, Sheriff. We thought all the con con conventioners would be at the motel. That's where we're heading. If you let us go. The military always makes me fill everything out in triplicate. I hate triplicate. You must have seen our lights. I did, but that's not why I'm out here. Why are you out here? We're looking for a girl who's disappeared. The state police said she might have wandered off. You seen anything of a teenage female? Nope. Nothing. Sorry. Ah, uh, go on, everyone. Get back to the meteorite. You got no business in the restricted zone, man. We didn't even know we were in the restricted zone. Well, you do now. Sure, use a donut and a Dr. Seuss. Pepper. Whatever. <laughs> Our dramatic main speakers. Mayor Midweek has consented to say a few kind words of welcome. Mayor Midweek. 
I won't be long, I won't be long. I just wanted to say the town of Meteorite is delighted to have you visit. We're very open-minded here. We don't judge. If you wish to believe in aliens and UFO nonsense, that's entirely up to you. Do visit our shops 20 miles down the road and buy things. Thank you so much. Come along, Cynthia. You know I don't like to drive when it's dark. They say Wednesday could be a dangerous time, Mayor. I said come along. Goodbye, everyone. It was nice meeting you. Bye. Bye. And Don, I did so enjoy my Mars burger. What was sprinkled in it? Dust from the planet Mars. <laughs> Joker. Wait for me, Mayor. Miss Bungleworth, you promised us some really spectacular speakers. Patience, patience. All things come to she who waits. Our first main speaker will be Mabel Shoemaker of Black Forest, New York. Where would you like me to stand, Miss Mogleworth? Wherever you like, Mabel. This is your moment. Cherish it. Just make sure to speak loud and clear. I want to get every word on tape. Uh, uh, well, I was in my yard snapping string beans. I enjoy snapping string beans. I don't get much exercise. It was almost dark. When all of a sudden, I saw this large white light fill my yard. And I looked up, and I saw this large silver spaceship hovering above. Ooh. Wow. Yes. The next thing I remember, I was being drawn inside the spaceship. And then next, I was being stretched out on a cold metal table with these creatures with these funny eyes and squeaky voices which were jabbing me these long fingernails. It was the most uncomfortable thing. Uh, uh, undoubtedly, the space creatures were just trying to figure out how a being from Earth functions. They're ever so clever. Diabolically clever. What happened next? I don't remember. I must have fainted. And when I woke back up, I was back in my yard snapping string beans. They were quite crispy. Amazing. Those creatures from Mars better not try anything with me. What can we help her? We don't know if they were from Mars. Don't matter. They're from outer space. Same thing. How did you feel when you got back to Earth, Mission Maker? Sleepy. Susanna, please ask them to hold questions until our next speaker has spoken. Please hold your questions until our next speaker has spoken. And that would be Mr. Charlie Whitefish of Right Here in Meteorite. Whitefish is a nickname, right? Nope. Whitefish is my real name. People are always kidding me about it. But I tell folks, I don't fish for whitefish. I fish for mountain trout mostly. I reckon I should have been named Charlie Trout instead. What has any of this to do with your abduction by aliens? I, I'm getting to that. Don't fish. I don't like to be fish. Uh, forget what he's going to say. Aliens! That's right. Aliens. I was sitting out on the lake in my boat. It's a nice boat. I painted it myself. Blue. I painted it blue on account of the general storm was out of red. Just like Mabel Shoemaker, I heard this loud buzzing sound and saw the lake flooded with a wide, white light. Exactly! Go on! You don't have to. We know what happened. He felt himself being drawn up inside the spaceship. And the next thing he knows, he was on an operating table surrounded by creatures with funny eyes and squeaky voices. And when he recovered, he was in this little blue boat by the lake. Yeah. Uh huh, that's it. More or less. We mean by more or less, really? Thought we were going to pull questions. The space boat took my mountain trout. They were only kidnappers, they were thieves. I wonder why they wanted to fish. Thieves. Right, Angle. Did you hear that, Rita? Thieves. You might be able to do something with that. Spacemen who crave trout. Exactly. I must say, the meteorite in puts on a good show. What do you mean by show, Miss Hepburn? I think you know what I mean. No, I don't. Here to explain? Look! Soldier! Good. I can use what I hope I can get. 
No one is to leave the premises. Citizens that leave the premises might get shot. Shot? I think you're going a bit too far with this, Mr. Albright. I don't know what's going on any more than you do, Miss Hedburn. I doubt that. Um, someone care to explain why there are soldiers here? Will someone please explain why there are soldiers here? Please direct all inquiries to the public information officer. In triplicate. Fantastic. Keep going. I've got a funny feeling these soldiers aren't playing games. I can assure you they're not. Who are you? Captain Davis. Where are you stationed? Sorry, that information's classified. Which means you're from Area 502? The military installation is not supposed to be there, but it is. Is a tree captured in space aliens over there? Sorry, I'm not allowed to comment on that. How many are outside the motel, Private Busy? Rough estimate 75, sir. Is that what you figured, Private Crowley? Approximately 75. Yes, sir. Hmm. I may need more troops. Just what is going on, Captain Davis? I received word from Sheriff Chikumaga that some of your UFO conventioners strayed close to the military installation. They were in the restricted zone, sir. Sheriff Chickamauga reported the violation in triple pit, sir. Oh dear, I'm afraid Sheriff Chickamauga did warn me about that. We told everyone to stay close to the two-way time ride. Not everyone plays by the rules. Tonight it's especially important to stay away from the restricted zone. Which means the army is testing some new equipment. They don't want anyone to know about it. Private Crowley, sir, place this man under house arrest. You're gonna have to come along with me, sir. What? No, you can't arrest me. No, no, I'm within the wall that separates these engineers from the disaster. Don't cause trouble, sir. You can't take your hands off me, you aliens. You can't fool me. Odd individual. That's Commander Coburn. He's nuts. Captain, I can tell you about the time when I was abducted by aliens. Me too. I recall every detail. I was sitting in my yard snapping. I want to hear all about it some other time. I'm afraid until morning, you people must remain close to this motel. It's something I'll have to insist upon. Understood? Understood. But, Captain Davis, can't you give us just a small hint about what you're working on? Private Goodley? Sir, place this woman under house arrest. What? what? Well, you can't, that's Miss Muggleworth. You can't arrest Miss Muggleworth. Why no, can't I? She's the one who organized this entire convention. It's only until morning. What are you waiting for, Private Bidley? <sighs> Sir, where's your room, ma'am? That way. Being placed under house arrest. Won't that be an interesting page in my diary? Come along, Susanna. I may need you. Yes, Miss Mugglewood. I suggest the rest of you go along to your rooms. Some of us are sleeping in the lobby. In that case, stay here in the lobby until morning. You heard me. Captain Davis, me and my brother are so excited to meet you. We've never met any of the local military. How about sending soldiers here sometime for chow? It isn't always this hectic. What soldiers? From the installation. What installation? Area 502. What's Area 502? Classified. Top secret. Hush, hush. If you'll excuse me, I'll have a few words with my soldiers. You must get tired of spending stations at a place that isn't there, but is. Whatever is going on tonight, he doesn't want any of us to see it. I think they test... whatever. They tested their installation on Wednesdays. I think Commander Coburn was... right? I sure would like to, to get a look at that alien that everyone says they have. <clears throat> Listen! It, it's overhead. Look, the meteorite rock! It, it's glowing. It's never acted like this before. The lights. What's the matter with them? Uh, I don't know. Could it be a short, short circuit? Peggy, what's going on? I have no clue. They've never acted like this before. This is all so weird. Run! Don't stop. <laughs> Quick! Hey! Why? You don't mind now. Talk about horrible. Talk about unbelievable. What's going on? What's going on? I've never seen anything so hideous before in my life. What? An alien. An, An alien? alien? Well, where's Deputy Murdoch? I suspect the alien got him. 
It's in his way. Straight for the meter on in. I'm going to hide in the kitchen. We can jump with the meat locker. What a day. D -d Doug, do you think it could be true? Uh, I think so. Why do you say that? Because here it comes. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps we only imagined it. 
I reckon I know a space creature when I see one. I didn't imagine it. You said the creature was hideous? Never seen anything so hideous before in my life. It had mean little eyes that shine in the dark. Bad breath, long fingernails, long toenails. The creature was barefooted? How should I know? You said it had long toenails. Toenails were some sticking to the creature's shoes. That's it. The long, ugly toenails were sticking through that creature's shoes. No, I don't think so. Was the creature male or female? Both. My readers will love this. <laughs> Doug, you got anything hot to drink? I'm so cold, I might as well be an Eskimo share. I guess it's definitely hot chocolate time. You'll find everything you need in the kitchen. That's for me. Me too. Hot chocolate for everybody. I'll take mine with frosted marshmallows. I don't want well, frosted marshmallows. Any donuts? Ooh, it was hideous. I think I'd better go see if Miss Hedberg is awake. She won't want to miss any of this. Whew, you ought to see what's outside. Military vehicles, a mass unit, soldiers coming and going, all for a joke. Joke. Everyone seems to think it was a scam except by Miss Muggleworth. Only Sheriff Chickamauga is buying the alien We're buying it. Yeah, it was no joke. It was an alien. What else could it say? The military wouldn't be surrounding this place if it were a joke. Mm. Got a point there. There's something else to think about. We are definitely leaving the meteorite in. You mean you're quitting? Absolutely. A broken dryer is one thing, but a nasty alien creature is definitely something else. When are you leaving? Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning? But you can't. Just watch us. Come on, Hazel. If we stand up, that nasty alien creature might grab us. I don't want to find myself on an operating mm -hmm. table in a spaceship. That'd be a horrible experience. Sorry, Peggy, Doug, but that's the way it has to be. But, but you can't leave. Me and Doug can't handle everything by ourselves. Hazel, Bernice, say your breath. On my congratulatory Douglas, on that alien creature foolishness, on the alien touch, it even got the military view. You're always implying something, Miss Hedberg. I wish you'd just come out with it. It's perfectly obvious. You whipped up the charade to get publicity. It's bogus. <coughs> Miss Hedburn, never tried to fool anyone. We found it the world today, the meteorite egg, a giant's pose. Doug, what are we going to do? What she's going to write about us is horrible and unfair. There's a woman outside and she says she knows you. Woman? Did she give you her name? Mintwee. Mintwee? This way. Mayor Mintwee! What happened to you? Oh, my dear, you might have sit down. Let me help you. Uh, I'll take that fire. Uh, I didn't expect to see you back here this evening. I didn't expect to be back. Something flew over my car and frightened me. I drove onto the sand and the tire blew. Why didn't you use a spare? There wasn't one. I found that tire on my road. Thought it might come in handy. Whew, it was a long walk to get back here. Where's Mrs. Willis? She'll turn on. She's a slow walker. <laughs> Mayor did. You said something flew over your car. Practically landed on the roof. And the noise it made like a thousand whirling helicopters. Do you have any idea what it was? I'm afraid not. When I lost control of my car, my, my mind went blank. You need to rest. You're terribly upset. You can use my room. None of this would have happened if Cynthia wasn't so determined to taste the Mars burger. Don't talk. You'll feel much better after you're rested. Whatever that flying thing was, it practically ripped off the top of my car. I 
eyes out of the vertical, you know. I was never so frightened in my life. Yes, yes. If Miss Willis doesn't turn up, I think we ought to notify the sheriff. He's in the kitchen. He's got out of the meat locker. I'll be sure to let him know. Thank you, Douglas. You're a thoughtful young man. What was the sheriff doing in the meat locker? Captain Davis requests this area to be cleared at once. Please vacate the lobby. But my lobby, my and my sister. Repeating. Captain Davis requests this area to be cleared at once. Please vacate the lobby. Fine, I'll go. I don't have enough as to head for I'm getting kicked out of my own motel. Area cleared, sir. Get moving. You got no right to harass me. This won't take long. I intend to report this to Washington. I've got friends in Washington. I'm on the A list. Please, sit down. You Martians won't get anything out of me. I said sit down. Huh, no need to be impolite. Private Cloudy, get Miss Schumacher and Mr. Whitefish from the room and bring them here. Now you, sir, you little commander, is of course a fiction. It is not. I made it up myself. You're well known in these parts. I'm the thin line between. Never mind that, dribble. Dribble? Earlier this evening, you said the army was testing new equipment. Yep. What makes you think so? That's what the alien spaceship transmitted. You understand what these aliens are transmitting? I speak their language. Let me get this straight. Aliens transmit and you understand what they're saying? That's long and short of it. Command over. I'm troll for you at those. <laughs> There'll be no but that, soldier! Yes, sir! Sorry, sir. I couldn't help myself. No excuses. Yes, sir. No excuses. Well, what's the problem? Why are we being treated like colonels? Please. Take a seat. We haven't done anything wrong. We're innocent bystanders in the game of life. Careful you say. They're Martians. Martians? You better believe it. I think you're wrong, Commander Cooper. I know what Martians look like. So do I. I was sitting out on the lake in my boat. It's a nice boat. I can fit in myself. Blue. I painted it blue on account of the general store was out of red. We can discuss that later. The important thing is you say you were abducted by an alien spaceship. I was. You can call me Coop if you want. Coop! And do you miss Shoemaker? It's Shoemaker, not Shoemarker. I'll make note of that. You two were abducted? At least, that's your story. If you're implying me a story, you're wrong. I was sitting in my yard stabbing string beans. And then all of a sudden, this alien spaceship arrived and stole me away. You could say I'm crazy if you want. You're, You're crazy. crazy. Are you getting all this down, Miss Armstrong? How did you know I was here, Captain Davis? I'm be training. I don't miss a thing. Let me ask your opinion. My opinion? Would you say these people were sincere in their galactic beliefs? Why, yes, I would. I'm certain they believe every word they've spoken. And you soldiers? Coop, sir. Crazy, sir. That's the way Martians talk. Very rude. I don't think I want to say any more. So, so do I. But I have so much to ask of you, Miss Shoemaker. Charlie? Careful what you say. That female is a Martian in disguise. I resent that, Commander Coburn. I may write for a tablet, but I am no Martian. All short, thin, fat Martians can change their shape faster than I can snap my fingers. <sighs> Darn. But be Martian interference. You all excuse. You you mean you only got us in here to play games? Sorry, I can't answer that. Security. I say you Martians are up to something bad here at the meteorite end. You're entitled to your own opinion. I should think you'd be trying to spend your time trying to capture that alien monster. What alien monster? There he goes again, pretending you don't know anything. You all excuse. Thanks for nothing. Waste of my valuable time. This is almost as bad as the time I went inside an alien spaceship with these creatures and these funny eyes and squeaky voices were jamming with these long fingernails. Face it, Miss Shoemaker. Our story is a hard sell. Oh, no, it isn't. Martians, trust me on this one. <laughs> I think we can declassify the lobby. Declassify, declassify the lobby. lobby. Yes, sir. 
Your attention, please. The lobby is now declassified. The motel as well. The motel as well. Dismissed. So far, so good. Thank goodness you came along, Deputy Murdoch. It's a part of my job, Miss Willis. I sure didn't think you could have happened without you. What were you doing on the side of the highway? Walking? I didn't mean that. May have made me head and asked the car. I hope she's all right. I got down. I am exhausted. You wouldn't believe what happened to us. You wouldn't believe what happened to me and the sheriff. It was humongous. What are you talking about? We saw an alien. The convention has gone to you. No, I tell you, we saw an alien, and I bet this meteorite rock has something to do with it! You're probably suffering from a touch <coughs> of indigestion. I know I am. That march for Gray earlier has not sat well. I hope Peggy has an out of self in handy. She ought to serve with each Mars burger. I don't care if it's part Mars dust. Plenty of excitement, huh? You've seen the sheriff? No, I haven't. How about Mayor Mitty? Sorry. When I play this tape, I'll get more calls and Swift will be able to handle. Uh, oh, hey, you got any more of that jelly donuts? Sounds like Sheriff took a bargo. Do ask if you see anything of Mayor Mitty. I'm so worried about her. Sure thing, Miss Willis. Sometimes I listen to your programs, Miss Dudley. Usually when I can't fall asleep. You mean my program puts you to sleep? Most of the time. Always nice to meet a fan. The army is catching up. How come they didn't let me know there's a space ambient somewhere around here? I suspect that Mr. Mugglewood had something to do with it. I resent that remark, Miss Willis. Highs of Muggleworth would never stoop to such a cheap theatrical trick. Some people may wish to believe that this whole business with a space creature is a trick. I'm not one of them, nor I. I mean, me. I mean, I. Who cares if it's real or fake? I'm like a great program. How cynical. Most people outside believe that aliens are a real thing. Bravo. Want to buy a kit? No. How much that? Like? No. Please, I have to leave the station. But I still don't like to leave the station. The bear calmed down. She's here? Oh, good. I was so worried. I understand we don't have to worry about the military anymore. This woman thinks that I came up with all this alien business. She's wrong. Hive and Muggleworth is always right when it comes to space. Thank you, Susanna. You're welcome. We're all a little bit on edge. Hi, me. I've got to escape. Who are you? Can't waste time. This is a good place. If anyone comes after me, tell them I'm not here. What on earth? Is she one of our commissioners? I don't recall seeing her. I've never seen her. She, she's not registered. Are you all right, miss? Where did she go? Who? 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 Please tell us. That girl desperately needs help. Girl? We found her on the side of the highway. Maybe we should introduce ourselves. I'm Leonard Weber, and this is my friend, Margaret Jones. Hi. Hello. Never mind all that. This is no time to play. This girl's in serious trouble. She might harm herself. Why do you say that? Mentally, she's confused. A lot of people are mentally confused. Look at Commander Coburn. Who's Commander Coburn? When we found her, she could barely speak. Then she slowly came up with some wild story about aliens. Aliens? Claimed they were about to land. She must have been a conventioneer. Let me take this. She said she had to come here, to this motel. Said it was important. That's a bit scary. I uh, wonder what she could have meant. Maybe she'd like to buy a button in her tent. Talk sense, Geraldine. She claims they kept her for over 24 hours. A nutcase, pure and simple. I am no nutcase, and what I said was true. I was abducted by aliens. I believe you, child. Did you find yourself on an operating table? No. That's unusual. Aliens usually perform weird scientific records on the big jagged pinch. They didn't do anything like that. She claims they kept her in a cell with walls without membrane. Membrane? Gross. Membrane? How revolting! Was it animal or vegetable tissue? She can't remember. She's definitely not well. Nonsense. All she needs is someone to believe in her. And she has found that person in Hyacinth Mugawar. We believe in you, Miss Roth. Roth! 
I know that name from somewhere. Who's that? Nothing to be afraid of, child. That's the sheriff. Sheriff Chickamauga. How can you be so sure? It could be an alien pretending to be someone else. Ross. Ross. That's the name of the lost girl. The one the state police were searching for. I believe you're right, Deputy Murder. Go to the head of the class. What's your first name, girly? Be gentle, Sheriff Chickamauga. She's been through a lot. He was abducted by aliens. Aliens? Aliens. I am sick and tired of hearing about aliens. Besides, all this foolishness was hooked up by her. Who? Her. I said muggle word. Slander. I shall speak to my attorney about you, Sheriff. Just make sure you spell my name right. Chickamauga with two C. I hate it when folks spell my name with only one C. I think Miss Ross needs medical attention. I think she needs psychiatric attention. How do you, Ruth? Glad to see you made back safely to the motel. Never mind about her. Do something about this unfortunate girl. We found her on the highway, babbling incoherently, naming Annie has kept her prisoner. And a cell made out of membrane. That's disgusting. Okay, okay, folks. We've all had our fun for the night. I admit, I was cool. But now I realize that this was but another of Miss Muggleworth's fancies to liven up this cuckoo UFO convention. Slander and now insult? I'm gonna sue you, Sheriff. Look, Rouse's Muggleworth, besmirching my character. There has never been a blemish on my good name. Ah, tell it to the Marines. Go on, all of you, make light of the situation. I tell you what happened to me was true. The aliens gave me a message, a message to back to Earth. Peggy, can I ask you something? Sir? Do you have Alka Seltzer handy? Go on, Miss Ross. Uh, we're all listening. It's a best of humor. Otherwise, they'll thrush about. The message is this. That's some message? Give it another try. The message is this. What's wrong with her? Let me see what I can do. Hear me, Earthlings. Earthlings! The first of our starships will be arriving soon. Do not oppose us. If you do, disaster will follow. Hello, everybody. The name is Betty Ross. What's yours? You look so different. Are you all right, Betty? Why shouldn't I be? You're wonderful. Perhaps a bit hungry. But you're terrible at what terrible experience? Being abducted by the aliens. Aliens? <laughs> Being trapped in a cell made out of membrane? Yuck. I have no idea what you're talking about. You've been missing for over 24 hours. That's silly. The state police are looking for you. If they want me, I'm here. You've got to stop this, Miss Lover. You've gone too far. It's not <laughs> uncommon for people who have had UFO experiences to forget them. In fact, it is quite common. That doesn't I have had it with this goofy alien garbage. Uh, what's it like? I, I don't know. Oh dear, that's sad. I heard just before Mamie jump off the road. Oh, look, look. What? It's the meteorite rock. It's glowing. Now cut that out.
got everything you need. We're quite ready to begin. Our town's too? I'm here, Dr. Trueblood. You did what? Any delays is disastrous. Decomposition is already set in. Decomposition? The aliens don't last long. It has something to do with the climate. You mean, you stop the aliens. We had no choice. We either perform the autopsy immediately or we'll have your bodies investigated. I can't allow that to happen. You're going to perform an autopsy on the alien? You've already heard too much, Mr. Albright. I'm swearing you to secrecy. There's never been an autopsy in this motel lobby before. Well, there's going to be one now. I must ask you to leave at once. I have secured this motel. No one may enter. We're losing valuable time. Every second counts. Do you have to place you under house arrest, Mr. Albright? No. I'll go. Then go. Yes, sir. My third format. <laughs> Ready, Dr. Hawk. Ready, Nurse Houston? Ready, Dr. Hawk. Let us proceed. Let's. Astonishing. Look at his hand. Amazing. The size of this gallstone. Incredible. Heart? Heart? It's all ready, Doctor. Never mind about that. The liver looks healthy. Never tell with the liver. Some internal alien mess. How unusual the eye that seems to be connected to anything. I suspect it's an alien diversion. They don't really have eyes. It's decomposing fast. Well, we'll have to hurry. Foot, foot, hand, hand, finger, finger, tongue, tongue. Kneecap, kneecap, nose, nose, thigh bone, thigh bone, hot water bottle, hot water bottle. It's too late. It's totally decomposed. Go on. What a pity. Turned into a foul smelling dust. You've got enough light, Dr. Sid. Yes. Yeah, as well as to be expected, Doctor. We did our best. Move back. See if you can look at Sheriff Shimago. Yes, sir. You secured everything for labeling their sound suit? Everything you gave me, Dr. Hawk, including the hot water bottle. Phew, what a stink. You'd better remove the evidence. Right. You play the part, Captain Davis. How long have you been hiding behind your re the registration desk, Miss Hedburn? Long enough to get some good shots. Go along, Miss Houndstooth. Take that trash bag with you. Yes, Captain Davis. Just a minute. Stop! You don't know what you're doing! Don't I? Look at this. It's fake. So is this. And this. How much is Mr. Albright paying you? I resent that. Go along, Miss Houndstooth, and take that trash with you. I mean, trash bag. Yes, sir. At once. If it's not Mr. Albright, it's not. In that case, it has to be that Tyson Bubblewood. An excellent player with an interest in her stupid UFO convention. I can assure you, I'm a captain of the U.S. Army. I don't care who you are. I had enough, and I want you as far away from the meteorite in as possible. I respect this concern. Confess. How much is Tyson's local worth paying you? I'll pretend I didn't hear that. Suit yourself. I intend to expose the scam in glorious fashion. I got some sensational pictures. Read about it in the world today. Is it safe? Everything's under control, Sheriff Chumago. Everyone say there was an odd tipsy here in the lobby. In a manner of speaking, listen closely. I've been instructed by Washington to work closely with the local law enforcement. That's me. How can I forget? Everything you've witnessed today has been a scheme to, to discredit the belief something goes on in Area 502. Uh, uh, don't it? It does, but it's all hush hush. We don't want to draw attention to Area 502. Consequently, if you can make people who believe in aliens seem foolish, then Attention to area 502 will fade. But what about that Betty Ross gal? 
She's a soldier, along with the people who found her on the highway, Leonard Webbett and Margaret Jones. What do y'all know? It was all a joke, after all. I knew that. You're not to tell anyone. That's essential. You can trust me. My lips are sealed. I shall evacuate the area. Remember, not a word to anyone. That's essential. I've written all the pages in my diary, even in the margins. You'll never guess. What? It's a dirty trick thing we do so low. I can't figure out that stupid odd talk. It's so dumb. Doug, Peggy, this smuggler, wait till you hear what Captain Davis just told me. What? Right. The army wants all the folks who are interested in Area 502 to look like fools. That's why they staged all this ruckus. Who knows? Oh, no. oh, yes. I know. Guess what? The government wants me to work closely with the military. I figure they know how much I'm worth. Not again. I thought all the fun and games were over. It's all a joke. The search will be eradicated. The period is in place. It will be a place of operation. Get out! Dog! Resistance is useless. Repeat, resistance is useless. Well now, you see here, I work very close with the military and I do not like your behavior. Now, take off them flash and let me get a good little look at it. Be forewarned. Yikes! What is it, Sheriff? It, it ain't got no eyes. Just some goop that looks like tapioca pudding. <laughs> Squirry mess of nerve cells. That, that can only mean one thing. What? There's the real article. Aliens from outer space. It, it's no joke this time. What are we going to do? We got to warn the world while there's still time. The aliens are coming! The aliens are coming! Please get out of the building! Leave this theater! Save yourselves! The aliens are coming! The aliens are coming!